All right. Today's training is called Identify Your Ideal Customers and Referral Partners. And the other part of it is why it's key to your success on Alignable. Um, I call them your most profitable customers. You will see as we go along. So first of all, I, I've kind of already introduced myself. I've been I've had businesses since I was 22 years old, which is about 40 years of <laughs> business experience. And uh, I, like I said, I work for Alignable. So I'm really excited to be here. My friend John is here. I don't have your slide up, John, but John, like I said, he's going to, when he comes on, you're going to want to hear from him. He is uh, actually the person that I, I learned most of this stuff from. So why is all of this important? Why do I love this topic so much? It's something I, I just love teaching entrepreneurs, but it's literally the most important thing you need to understand in your business in order for you to be able to market to the right people. And it's like this, if you don't know and truly understand everything about your ideal customer, then how on earth are you going to be able to market to them in a way that speaks directly to them? How can you explain to your referral partners exactly who you want to meet and how and where to find them? And Alignable is like your best referral partner, by the way. So you have to be able to understand this and tell Alignable who you want to meet. In this training, you just might find a new perspective on who your ideal customer truly is. And a little hint here, it might not be who you think it is all the time. <laughs> But once you know all of this, it will be easy for you to find your potential customers and actually attract them to you. But most importantly, you're going to be able to craft the right message that will make them want what you are offering. Sound good? All right. So Alignable, first of all, I'm going to give you a little reason why this is so important, the topic um, to get right on Alignable. So Alignable is a network matching platform. So when you tell Alignable who you want to meet, it's a networking platform, you tell them who your ideal customers are, you tell them who your ideal referral partners are, and then Alignable matches you up with them. But if you don't have that right on your profile, they're not going to give you the right people. They're not going to introduce to you to the people that need that you want to meet. So there's a page like this. When you do your profile and you click on my network, uh, discover your network, it's going to give you all these different buckets of people. One of them is referral partners, for example. So if you have told Alignable exactly who your ideal referral partner is for your business, boom, and they're going to give you a bucket of them to go network with. You're also going to be found in the business directory. We have a great business directory. When people are searching for you or what you're doing or your products or service, they can find you in the business directory. So you have to get all this stuff really right. Now, here's the thing. On your profile, I'm going to focus on your ideal network. So this, it looks something like this. So as you're editing your profile, you'll see a place where you can tell Alignable who your ideal customers are. So the screenshot here is from my friend Lagai Kelly, who happens to own a dog kennels in Santa Clarita, California. She takes all kinds of pets, though. And so her, her customers, her best customers are pet owners who need a place to bring their pets. So it's pretty general. But because Alignable does not tell, um, they don't ask us if we own a pet. <laughs> um, we can, Alignable can't really find those people for her. However, Alignable can find veterinarians and veterinarians, all of their customers have a pet. So Alignable can really help her find those referral partners. Now, she also has customers that she wants to help grow their pet industry. So she loves meeting other kennel owners who want to actually grow their businesses. So she's a consultant. But this part, this section, these two sections on your Alignable profile is where you're going to tell Alignable who you want to meet. And just real quick, these little tags here, that's you have to have those right, because if you don't have them right, then Alignable won't be able to go find pe the people to introduce you to in the nine plus million members that we have. Okay, first of all, what is an ideal customer? Okay, who do you want your network to introduce you to? So you've got to know who your ideal customer is. That's what we're going to dig into right now. Um, an ideal referral partner, though, just to give you a quick heads up, 
who are you most likely to share referrals with? And in my opinion, there's really two kinds of referral partners on Alignable. The first one is the people that you meet and build relationships with. So as you're networking and you're meeting people and you're, you're, you're getting to that trust factor where other people really know, like, and trust you and vice versa, then those people, if they're talking to other people and they find out somebody needs what you're selling, they're going to tell them about you. So that's just one referral partner. But the most important referral partner, the one that they can really help, are the people who have businesses that serve your ideal customer, but aren't a direct competitor, like veterinarians for my friend Ligaya, who has a dog kennel, okay? All right, so let's stop with who is your ideal customer. And John, you can jump in here anytime you want. <laughs> First of all. You're doing awesome. <laughs> Who is it not? It's not your target market. What do you say, John? Target markets don't have credit cards. <laughs> they don't have credit cards. When John told me that, I'm like, you're kind of right. People have credit cards. So we have to figure, figure out exactly who has the credit cards <laughs> that are going to pay you for whatever you're selling. And it's not everybody. If you're marketing to everybody, you're trying to talk to everybody you're talking to no one. So let's nail this down here. What is an ideal customer avatar? Now the word avatar is a marketing term. So, uh, but what it means, it's, it's like a representation of your ideal customer. And it focuses only on one person. You can't, you can't do your marketing for everybody all at once. You have to pick one. You have to pick one person. So who are you going to pick? What if all of these people are your potential customer avatars? Okay, which one are you going to pick? Well, you're going to pick the most profitable one, right? The one that's going to make you the most profit in your business. So you have to pick one at a time. Now you're going to have more, of course, like I said, but you're going to pick one, the most profitable one. So let me see. Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back here. John, do you want to do you want to tell the, the water bottle story? Or do you want me to tell it? Oh, either one. I mean, you're doing awesome. <laughs> okay. I'll tell the water bottle story and then you can tell the fun one after this. So here's an example of, of um, how to determine that ideal customer avatar. So what if you're selling? So, okay, John, you, you met someone, one of your clients sold water, right? Yeah. How, how did this all start? Can you remind me? I was so used to like blowing people out of the water. Like I would ask them a qualifying question if they wanted to work with me. And my question was, you know, who's your most profitable customer? Who do you, you know, what, what market segment do you go to? And they gave me the whole bit of, I sell to everyone. And I always stop everybody right there and say, no, you probably really don't. I said, what's your product? And he said, well, I sell water. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess everybody really does consume water. And then I thought about it for a second. I'm like, well, okay, here's how I'm going to explain this one. Yes, they all drink water, but some will pay more for the same water. Like you can take the same product and you can repackage it for different markets and it's more valuable to certain markets. So I said an example, we could split the water into three different market segments. We could split it into the green people that like to recycle and save the world and, you know, give back and all that. But if you try and sell them that bottle of water for 20 bucks, they, I don't care how much they love the earth. They're not paying 20 bucks for a bottle of water, right? Just not going to happen. Now you could sell the same bottle of water to people that are interested in performance or endurance, like a racer, somebody that's going to run a marathon. They might spend that amount of money on the water only when they're training and when they're very serious, but not long-term. But if you go to health and you repackage that water as it nourishes your cells and it helps prevent disease and it can actually give you more time on earth. When people get to that point where they've been diagnosed with something that's terminal and 
you know, if this water potentially could give them even a few days or a few hours, what's that water worth? It's worth any amount. So right. you can see how the same product could be very different value proposition to different market segments. So that's yeah. what Sue is talking about here. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So it's like how many pallets of water would the last person <laughs> buy for that? Right. Okay. So getting to know your ideal avatar. So first of all, how do you get to know who that ideal customer is? It's based on research. This is where I really want to bring John in here because we're going to share at the end, I'm going to share uh, some tools that we're going to help you with this, but it's based on research, not your own opinion and perception. So when I, I guess my little story is I owned a school for many, many years and I did really well and I figured all of this stuff out. Well, when I sold my business, I was starting a new business and my business was I wanted to help people who wanted to start a business. And so I was, John asked me, he did what he told you. He, he asked me, he said, Sue, well, who's your most profitable avatar? And I said, oh, I know exactly who it is. I don't have to do the research. I know it's a woman. She's, um, you know, she's, she's in her forties or maybe close to 50 and her kids are, are gone. She's divorced and she's been a stay at home mom. And she wants, I have this whole thing. And he goes, I said, no, I'm sure because I owned a school and I talk to these people all the time. And he said, well, let's just test it out and, and do the research. So he kind of drugged me kicking and screaming to do the research. And guess what? I found out I was wrong. Like I was really wrong. <laughs> and um, it was more of a man or a young man who was between like 20 and 27 who'd gone to college to be a rocket scientist and found out he could make more money starting a business. It was, there was a whole thing behind it. So you have to do the research to do that. The other thing is your avatar might not be who you think it is. Another story is this. So my father got dementia, okay? And my younger sister and I had to move my dad into a, a, a memory care facility and we had to sell his house that he'd owned for many years. That there was lots of realtors who wanted to sell his house for us, right? Lots of them. But guess which one we picked? We picked the one realtor that their marketing, their marketing uh, message was that they helped the kids of seniors. They market, marketed to us. So we found, we chose the realtor that was specializing in helping the kids of seniors. Do you see the difference? We were not going to, there was no other realtor we were going to pick. So those most realtors say they can help anybody who wants to buy or sell a house okay so and that realtor was marketing to us the kids not my dad because if they marketed to him it wouldn't work because he couldn't sell his own house does that make sense to you guys so you got to think who it is it's like when i owned my school we were i was tutoring well the kids did i didn't market to the kids they couldn't pay me it was the parents that i marketed to so you have to think about exactly who that is. So here's the thing, getting to know your ideal customer aperture. So here's a few ideas on how to get to know them before we get into some nitty gritty stuff. Now, if you already have an ideal customer, interview them, ask them, you know, get them, learn more about them. I remember my first customer when, or this client, when I started helping people start a business, she was a grief recovery specialist and she was amazing. She was by far my most profitable, uh, amazing customer. And so I sat down with her, I took her to lunch and I asked her everything about her so that I could find more of her, right? Once you find that ideal customer that's making profit in your business, you want to duplicate them. You want to clone them somehow and find more of them. Um, you can also spy on your successful competitors and businesses who serve the same client. This is actually how I built my after school program. So I started with a tutoring company and through a series of things that happened, I got I had to start an after school program. Well, I didn't know anything about after school programs, picking up kids from school and all that. So what I did is I went and I looked up all of my competitors, all the people that did after school programs in my community, 
and I spied on them. <laughs> I found out who, what their marketing was, who did they market to? What did they, I learned everything. I found out where they marketed, how they got their customers. And um, I even became friends with one of my competitors and we became great referral partners later. So spy on your competitors, the successful ones, not the ones that aren't, of course. <laughs> All right. And then here's what I want John to talk about. So online research, this is the part that used to take forever. Like I remember when John made me do the research, it took like a month and I was in tears because it was so hard. <laughs> um, but the big thing now is chat GPT. So um, John, do you want to throw in some stuff on the kinds of things you can do to do research along those lines? Yeah, I've actually been working on tools. At first, I started doing prompts. And if you guys aren't familiar with AI and chat GPT and all that, the prompt is really the question that you ask the chat window. And it is AI and it comes back and it gives you an, a result. But the problem is most people don't really know how to communicate with a machine. They know how to talk to their friends, but they don't know how to talk to an AI. And it's very different. It's a very, very different landscape. And if you're not used to it, it's kind of like being dropped out in the middle of the jungle with no food. And you're going to have to try and figure out how you're going to feed yourself. <laughs> so it's not a real easy proposition for most. Uh, me coming from the background that I that I have come from, it was like it was like dropping me in the middle of Disneyland. I absolutely <laughs> loved it, and and I started trying to teach people how to do the prompting, and they they just didn't really get their head wrapped around it. So I don't know, Sue, if you want me to like go into like prompting and how to prompt and try and teach and share prompting or just show you what I came up with <laughs> well okay I have a screenshot at the end of this and I was thinking if you guys all stick around John can go over this amazing set of tools that he created to do this so let's pause and and do that at the end how about okay. that that way everybody can get the training and then know what they're looking for so okay cool I'm, yeah. I'm excited about that for sure this is this is what's gotten me most excited to do all this stuff. Um, <laughs> so here, here's the thing. So John, the, the tools that you have can also help you do this, right? Building um, a client profile, right? Yes. Yeah, like to give you an example, if you were going to write a prompt to try and get this information, what would that look like? How would you ask the chat window for this? And basically, most people would write maybe a paragraph. My prompt to do this research is 13 pages long. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's a 13-page prompt to get what I'm getting out of it. And it goes so far deeper than this, it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> Yeah, so this this right here, so you guys are all understanding, when you want to figure out who your ideal, most profitable cu uh, customer avatar is, you have to know everything about them, everything. What do they eat for breakfast? <laughs> to what makes them go to sleep at night? What, what, everything about them, everything about their demographic, where they're from, if they have kids, e everything. So to, to be able to determine and figure out everything you know about this person, that's when you can do the marketing materials. So what John's gonna share with you at the end of this is some tools that he created that make it really fast, right, John, to, to come up with these avatars. Am I right? right? Really fast. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good, good. So why is all this stuff important, you guys? First of all, um, it gives a clear communication of your value. When you're creating those marketing materials, people will, the way that you write these marketing material, these marketing um, um, things that you, it's going to speak to the people. It's share your value you'll be able to create marketing messages that will actually attract the right most profitable customers to you so like i said the first thing you have to do is figure out who they are and then get to know them so well that you can speak their language to them so here's my i, I was going to say this before i showed it on the screen but 
my tutoring business. So I had it started out a tutoring business and I had an after school program and I had this whole big learning center and I had to come up with the marketing messages that just catapulted my business into the universe. And it was this one right here. No more homework headaches. Get your family time back. How did I come up with that? Well, I had a tutoring business and I would get phone calls from parents in tears, literally in tears, telling me that they could not help their kids with homework. They were fighting. They, they were not getting along. It was absolutely terrible. They would drive to work early in the morning. They'd drive hours from Los Angeles back to a suburb that I lived in. And then they'd have to take their kid to tutoring if they had to. It was just crazy. And they were so upset. They really, really just wanted to have family time with their family and not have to worry about homework. I don't know. I'm sure many of you, if you have kids, you know this, <laughs> I feel the same way. So I knew this. I knew that the worst pain for a parent was homework. So my tutoring business, uh, when I added an after school program, what we did is we, we became better than my competition where we would pick up the kids from school. We'd bring them back and get all their homework done. And we, we'd get everything done for them. We'd even take them to their dance classes, anything that they needed. Um, and then when the parents got home from traveling two hours in traffic home to, and came to pick them up, they were already done. They could go home and have family time with their family. So think about this. They weren't buying tutoring. They were buying family time. That was the big aha. What are your clients really buying? They, were, they weren't looking for tutoring. They were looking for family time. So that's why this message worked so well, right? So that's what you want to get to. You want to get to that perfect marketing message that speaks to them where they will just say, what do I write the check for? And that's what people would do when I put this marketing message out. You can't believe how many people called and said they had a headache. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna let John tell this story. It's my favorite story to tell, but I'm gonna let John do it because it's his story. But um, yeah, go ahead, John. This is a good one, you guys. <laughs> so this is a something that I've always done in my business. And I used to do a lot of search engine optimization for companies. And I would always invite them into my office once a year to review their, their campaigns and see how I could do better for them. And I had this one client, it was called Water Ventures. And they built, uh, you know, or actually, I didn't realize they built things. I thought they just sold water sports equipment to like resorts and stuff like that. Not one at a time. They were selling like bulk loads to resorts and places around the world. So that's what I had them optimized for. And when they came in, they said, oh, you know, things are really great. And I said, well, cool. What's your most profit item? What's your most high profit item? And they said, well, water slides, you know, we do water slide construction. And I'm like, well, I didn't even know that. So how about we change the program and start focusing on that? So I did, I started driving, driving traffic to them through search engines for water slide development. And next thing you know, the owner is in his office on a Saturday and the phone rings and he picks it up and he thought it was a prank. So he hung up on her because she said, this is Celine Dion. Well, she called right back and said, hey, we just got disconnected. And he's like, oh, oh, uh oh, <laughs> I really screwed that up. <laughs> so he said, how can I help you? And she said, she's looking for a water slide. And he's like really puzzled because no one had ever asked him for that. And he said, well, how did you hear about us? And she said, well, you were number one on Google. So I called you first. She wound up flying him out to Las Vegas and putting a million dollar water slide in her backyard. It was crazy. And he is in my office like the week after that, all excited going, can we have another meeting? And I'm like, sure. And he said, I want to do water parks. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Can you actually do a water park? I mean, a slide is one thing, but you're talking about a water park. 
he's like, yeah, he goes, I have all the vendors. I have all the construction crews. We can do water parks. And I said, all right. So I adjusted his campaign and within, I, I don't remember if it was three or six months, but he got a hundred million dollar water park project just by refocusing who his ideal customer was. You know, we went from focusing on resorts that were buying fins, masks, snorkels, Hobie cats to million dollar water slides to hundred million dollar water parks. Again, it's the same product. It's just picking the more profitable avatar. Just that slight little difference. You could literally go from selling fins and masks and snorkels to hundred million dollar water parks. I love that story so much. Yeah, you guys <laughs> look online. This is the the aerial view of Celine Dion's water slides that she had put in her backyard. So pretty amazing. So think about what I mean. Think about what that can mean for you when you have when when you're focusing on one type of customer and then and, and one thing you just tweak your marketing just a little bit to speak to a different person that could change everything in your business. I mean, this guy went from just like what he said, from selling little things to huge, he just needed one client for probably the rest of his life, $100 million. Oh, I love that story. Oh, here's another one you can tell too, John, if you don't mind. <laughs> this is this kind of the same lesson. It's repackaging, like Sue had told you earlier, how she repackaged her messaging for her, for her tutoring, you know, was getting back your family time. That's what people really wanted. Well, there's a guy named Timothy Ferris. Some of you probably heard of him, the four hour work week. When he first released his book, he called it outsourcing for dummies because that's really what the book is all about, but he couldn't sell that to save his life. No one wanted to buy outsourcing for dummies. The contents of the book is identical to the four hour work week. The only difference is the cover and the name. So again, he took the same water bottle and repackaged it for a different market. The market of people that were looking for freedom. They weren't looking for outsourcing. That seems like work. They wanted the four hour work week. The outsourcing was how that is delivered. You see the difference? It's very slight. It's very slight differences between struggling and not getting any sales to having your books fly off the shelf and you can't keep them in stock. Very <laughs> slight difference. It's that that just blew, this one really blew my mind too because I didn't know that he had done that. But yeah, the four hour work week and how many billions of copies has he probably sold of that book? <laughs> oh, amazing. Okay. Here's the other thing, you guys. So once you know who that ideal customer avatar is, you can easily figure out where to find them. You know, it's like uh, my friend Lagaya who wanted to meet veterinarians, for example, so she could go to the Association of Veterinarians. You got to figure out where they are. And if you're going on online, you know, are they on Pinterest? Are you doing, is your customers on that social media platform? Are they at Chamber of Commerce meetings in person? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Facebook? You have to figure out where they are. So that's the next step that you could do that when you know who those clients are. Now, I want to tell one of my favorite stories here about Fran, and she's actually on here today too. She's in the room today. I would love all of you guys to connect with her. So Fran, she doesn't mind me telling this because she's actually quite proud of it. She turned 80 this year and she is a serial entrepreneur. This woman has come up with so many business ideas. She works so hard. She has a super successful Etsy store that she's worked in for, that's a lot of hard work that she does, but she does really well with that. And um, anyway, she's, she's just one of those serial entrepreneurs. Well, I want to tell you something. So I've known Fran for a long time and I lived in Santa Clarita, California, where I met her. And she came up to me one day and she gives me this package. She goes, you aren't going to believe this, Sue. I came up with the greatest product. 
And just to give you a background, she loves spices and herbs, and she knows everything about them. She knows what every single spice or herb does to help with a health benefit. Like she knows that garlic, for example, helps with whatever certain thing that garlic helps with and turmeric and all these different things. So what she did is she figured out that she could take these spices and she could blend certain ones together uh, to help solve a, a health benefit, you know, about health crisis. So, but her first product she gave to me and it was called something like um, sp smoothie spice blends for health benefits. It's to get healthy. She goes, look at this. I have these blends and it's going to help you. Uh, you can put them in your smoothies, Sue, and it'll help you get healthy. Well, I, I was like, thank you. That sounds awesome, friend. And I went home and I put them in the cupboard. I didn't even open them because I don't drink smoothies and I was already healthy. So I, I didn't see any value to that for me. And they were literally in my cupboard for years until one day I was talking to her and I was telling her that I found out about my dad getting dementia. And I was really upset because I had just visited him and I was absolutely terrified, like terrified that I was going to get that when I got older. And I said, I have got to keep my brain healthy. I have, I, I do not want to get that. It's terrible. I was like in tears. She said, Sue, don't worry. I, I can create a spice blend for you that will help with your brain, your bra help um, with your brain health. I'm like, how many can I buy? So she literally came up with a spice blend for health, for brain health. And I, my cupboard was full of them. Later on, my hair started breaking off and she made me a spice blend for hair and skin. And then what happened? She did this. She got smart and she created different products for different health benefits. Now, here's the thing. It goes a step further. So each one of these are for different people. Like my friend Sherry had some liver issues. So she created one for liver. Um, well, that doesn't interest me, but she could create a marketing uh, a marketing campaign to target people with those different health benefits. And this was kind of funny. I think I learned this from John that one of the, most searched terms on YouTube was how to get rid of belly fat. <laughs> and so we were having this conversation about belly fat. I mean, how many of us have searched for how to get rid of our belly fat? Well, she created belly fat spices. And so she actually has a blend of spices that you could put in tea or different kinds of food that will help with your belly fat. Well, here's something else that happened. So I, uh, she, she had this this guy that took the belly fat spices and wrote her this review and the review said that he'd lost some inches on his waist he loved these spices but he'd also slept better it, it helped him sleep better because he had a lot of insomnia well i was with my friend who was 84 and her husband was 86 he had diabetes and she she was pretty health, healthy for the most part but i was telling her that fran was coming over to visit because they lived near each other and I was telling her about the belly fat spices and, and what the guy had said. And as soon as I told her that it had helped him sleep better, she literally started crying. And she said, oh, my God, can she please bring me some? I have the worst insomnia. I wake up every night at two o'clock in the morning. I can't get to sleep. It's really hurting me and it's affecting me. And so instantly, Fran had a new customer. And her husband had diabetes and she has diabetes spices. So I know I'm going on and on about this, but I want you to really think about that. How can you, maybe you have a certain product that can be packaged, like John said, in different ways, or you could create um, big, more products, but make sure that each one of those marketing campaigns that you do for those speaks to the person who actually has the money to buy it. <laughs> so I'm excited about Fran. She just wrote a book. Now uh, that's another, actually, I think this was in the four hour work week, if I'm not mistaken, how Fran started making all these spices. And now she's didn't want to do all of the work all the time. So she wrote a book to teach people how to do it themselves. <laughs> so this is an awesome book, by the way, if you want to grab it. Um, and then just a little a little plug here, Fran and I are working together. Fran is now publishing books for people. She's amazing. She's been in the publishing business for a long time and now she's helping people write their books. So I'll share where you can find out more about that, but you guys should all connect with her. She's awesome. Thanks for being here, Fran. I know you're in here somewhere. <laughs>
Okay. Now we're going to, I'm going to let John do some talking here. Uh, if you want to screenshot this, everyone, I have, um, and this QR code goes to my website with uh, a lot of the marketing materials and especially the one John's going to talk about here. Um, and by the way, I just finished a new book I'm excited about. You can go learn about that too. Um, I had to, I'm, I'm super excited. It just came out on Amazon about networking, but uh, I'm going to turn this over to John now. I really appreciate you being here, John, but this is a screenshot of all of these tools that he has. And I know you're adding more because I just went in there yesterday and <laughs> went, hey, I got even more stuff in here. So, uh, and just FYI, everyone, the ACT program, he can tell you a little bit about that. I helped John um, when he was putting this together and it's amazing. And it it's, it. it's if you think what you learned today got your brain going, this is like a million times more information to help you with your marketing and your, and your business. So take it away, John, tell us about this suite of material of tools here. All right. I'm going to share my screen here. If that works, let me stop and let you go. Okay, let me, all right. Can you see where we're at? Huh? Okay, so what I did, I just logged into this set of tools called Quantum. I originally built this set of tools for my ACT members because I was teaching them marketing. And again, like the what Sue had talked about, it's really hard for people to do this research. Like when I told her all of what she needed to do, she just cringed and it took her a long time to do it. So with AI coming out, I was trying to teach people how to prompt and make it easier. And then I thought, well, okay, let me just make it super easy and create a set of tools. So from here down, these are all tools for marketing. And this is where it really begins. Like when I teach marketing, this is the first piece of your market research is segmenting your market. You can't really create an avatar before you segment the market because you got to figure out what the most profitable segment is. Like we were talking about the water and the water parks and all that. If you don't know your most profitable segment, you can't build an effective buyer profile or avatar profile. Notice I changed the word avatar to buyer. I like because that. I don't want avatars. I want buyers. I want to get in the head of a buyer and I want to know what they're thinking so I know how to communicate with them. So let me just show you. I'm just going to show you these two tools and I'll demonstrate it. Do we want to actually do a live demo and do this for someone? If like you want to, that might be cool. I don't know. Fran maybe Fran would you like to do one for the books maybe I don't know if that would be a good one or not you're muted Fran <laughs> you mean the new publishing or or which the, of the spice book so the new so, publishing okay so what is what's your general marketing Fran like is it health publishing no not at this point it's um authors that want to promote their business as a tool with a, as a book as a marketing tool okay gotcha so it's in many different areas but they need to zero in on which kind of um what is the best market for a book that would book a book would work best okay so you've got to kind of think about that in market specifics mm -hmm. so you're in the marketing category but you're really in publishing Mm -hmm. So it would probably be like publishing for marketers, right? Um, this is people that want to promote their business to people by handing them something tangible. Okay. It's how they bit how it's their it's their expertise. They're writing. They've written a book on their own expertise, and therefore they want to get that expertise in their um, new customers' hands. Yes, okay. and, and but Fran, you want to find those business owners that want to publish right. their own. Yeah, okay. Just want to make sure that's clear. Okay. So I'm just going to put publishing for marketing in here and let's just see what we get. Because what it's going to do, it's going to look at all the different segments of that and it's going to categorize them in the most profitable first down to the least profitable. So mm -hmm. large enterprise is the number one segment for publishing for marketing. 
So if you wanted to use that to make a lot of money, this is where you would look. This is where your avatar is going to live. Medium-sized businesses, marketing agencies, e-commerce businesses, mm -hmm. small businesses. It sounds like this is kind of what you want to focus on here. So it's like halfway in the profitability range and that's okay. You know, if that's, if that's where your, your marketing is, let's just grab that mm -hmm. and we'll move to the next step. So now we've got the segment. Now we're going to go in here and we're going to build a buyer. So we have to do the segment. So we're going to put small business in as the market segment that we want to target. And then the product is a published book, right? Mm -hmm. right, let's call it book publishing book uh, and marketing tool okay so it's, it's book creation and publishing and so we're trying to figure out who the buyer is here. We're gonna create a buyer profile. So let's generate results and watch how fast this thing does what it's gonna do. It's digging up a whole lot of information. This is a 13 page prompt behind the scenes that's doing the work here. And it, you saw Sue's avatar profile. That's what it's creating here. So it says the name is Alex. He's an aspiring business owner, aspiring author, business owner. He's 35. It tells you about him. Now, here's his core problem. So the core problem is struggling with the daunting task of writing and publishing a book due to time constraints, lack of expertise, and fear of unknown publishing process. Right? Does that sound close? Exactly. Now, here is the emotions around that problem. This is what the emotions are being created in his head. Overwhelm at the thought of even starting. Mm -hmm. Frustration with lack of progress because he hasn't started. Anxiety about producing quality content. Fear of judgment from peers. Impatience for recognition and results. So this is the stuff, like I always say, what is your what is your buyer thinking about when they lay their head on the pillow at night that's keeping them from going to sleep? That's it right there. Here's the fears that it's creating. You know, they're fearing that the book will fail and not sell. Negative reception from the audience, wasting valuable time, not being seen as an expert. This is all the stuff. When you create your copy to try and sell this, these are the emotional triggers you need to pull on. Here is the way these fears are affecting relationships in this buyer's life. You know, it's an increased tension with their team due to stress. <laughs> Neglected family time leads to relationship strain. Diminished social life, you know, aspects with friendships, makes networking feel transactional rather than genuine, creates distance in mentorship relationships due to insecurity. So he's keeping secrets from who he's really getting advice from because he's afraid. So this is what they're really thinking. Now, would you have been able to come up with this on your own in 30 seconds like I just did? So here's hurtful things that these relationships might say. Like, do you think this guy wants to hear, hey, are you biting off more than you can chew? That's going to just like stick a fork in him. You know, how's that book coming along? I'm still stuck? These are things he doesn't want to hear. You know, so here's other solutions that he might have already tried in the past and failed. You know, do-it-yourself writing and editing, hiring freelancer editors, downloading various productivity apps, attending writing workshops, collaborating with a ghostwriter. Here's things that he's thinking about those past attempts. 
You know, this is these are sound bites that are going on. It's like the little guy standing on his shoulder, biting him in the ear, saying this stuff. You know, I just can't find the time to finish it. The freelancer didn't understand my vision. Apps and tools are more distracting than helpful. Can you see how this would be helpful if you're writing copy to this person or even talking to them? Mm -hmm. It helps you walk a mile in their shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, here's things. This is really interesting. This is what they don't want to do to fix their problem. So if you're talking to them, telling them they have to do these things, you're going to lose the sale. Like right now. This is what they do not want to do. So in other words, this is the stuff you have to tell them. Hey, you don't have to do this stuff. <laughs> so sacrifice significant business time. Spend excessively on uncertain solutions. Release subpar content hastily. Again, these are things they don't want to do to get the objective met. And here's sound bites around what they don't want to do. I won't let this take over my life. I can't drain my budget for this. I refuse to re release a half-baked book. It still needs to be my vision. I need to stay in control of my own message. So, you know, if you're talking about outsourcers and he's had those other experiences, you're going to have a tough sell on this. Just like Tim Ferriss had a tough sell on selling outsourcing. He relabeled it the four-hour work week. This kind of intel will help you make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Here's the transformation. If a genie could snap their fingers and give them the perfect solution, what would our prospect's life look like? You know, how would this transformation affect those key relationships? This is all the upside stuff. This is all the stuff that's going to make them want to buy your thing. It's going to make them not be able to sleep at night if they don't buy your thing. <laughs> Here's the sound bites that they're hearing after the transformation. I can't believe how professional my book looks. That's what they want. They want to look professional. This mm -hmm. has completely changed the game for my business. That's mm -hmm. what they want. I can finally focus fully on my next big project. Again, this is what they want. They don't want to be focusing on a book. They want to move on to the next step. Mm -hmm. My clients see me as a thought leader now. So this is really powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. This is more than just what they eat for breakfast. This <laughs> is truly mind reading. Mm -hmm. I've wrapped a 13 page script into mind reading of the buyer. Mm -hmm. This is some powerful, powerful stuff. So, I mean, this thing, it goes on and on and on, you know, here's what are the top five biggest objections. So these are things you're going to have to address in your copy. Mm -hmm. Now you can take this, you can take those five objections over here and there is there is a where is it where's my objection here's my franklin belief builder this wow. eliminates all objections mm -hmm. if you want their buying triggers if you want to know what they're hearing and the fears that's creating in the market like they might be hearing other people have failed with books and it made them look like a fool that might be what they're hearing and the fears it's creating so again, this, there's just a, an incredible suite of tools here to do everything you need to do to sell your stuff. Mm -hmm. This is a really interesting one. Sue had mentioned uh, your competition. And most people think like, like I, I've got one up here. This is for a chiropractor. And basically their service is back pain removal, you know, getting rid of back pain. So they want to know who their competitors are that are not competing. So physical therapy, massage therapy, acupuncture, pain medication, yoga, osteopathy, hot, cold therapy. Some of the stuff I've never even heard of. Ergonomic solutions. 
tens therapy that's that like electroshock stuff herbal remedies so this might open up another avenue for you for back pain you could label one of your herbal rem remedy packs as back pain and have a whole market mm -hmm. but anyway it's it's telling them the top competitors so they can go look at these people and see how they're messaging and that way like and the reason you would want to do this is a chiropractor, if he thinks the only competitor he has is another chiropractor and he's addressing the market that way, his customer is getting inundated with messages from other things competing. And most of them don't address those. So they only address that little sliver and they miss 90% of the market. Mm -hmm. They don't speak to 90% of their customers. Wow. So this is a pretty damn cool set of tools. Very, very powerful. Well, I've, already, I've jumped in a little bit already. Fran and I have been in here a little bit. It actually helped me create my uh, book cover. So it's oh, got a cool. lot of imagery things. And I actually used it to create. It gave me a great graphic that I used to create my book cover. Um, and uh, using a lot of... I created my logo behind, but I... Have it, I have to move it down. I was too in a hurry today. <laughs> I mean, I've even made others, other stuff like this one is for realtors because I found out most realtors have trouble getting a listing, they have trouble writing a listing. I put this together, and the first realtor that used it, they made their listing for an open house. They said when they showed up to the open house, there was 30 people wrapped around the building waiting to get in. They'd never seen anything like it. Oh, my God. It was amazing. And like John, this, I, this John one, I have, yeah, go ahead, friend. I have a question on this. Okay. I've been I've been using some of these features mm -hmm. and um, it, this is amazing information that you have given me because I am writing a book for from scratch for a client right now. And yeah. What you've shown me is giving me brand new way a place to go. But my next, my question is, there are so many little things in here that I was not able to really figure out. So how can we know what these things are going to do? Um, that would add value to me to as a new person to using your tools. Sure. If you go over here, this little button is called the app store. Okay. If you click on that, there's a description of each tool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> kind of to tell you what the tool does. But uh, beyond that, I'm going to actually do a webinar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a training webinar and I'm going to go through each tool. Mm -hmm. Like you saw, I only covered, what, three right. tools here now. There's almost 40 tools in here now, or more, maybe there's more than 40 at this point. <laughs> so I'm going to do like a probably going to be a two hour session where I just cover each tool in depth and give examples and actually use it like this is a really cool one here video genesis you can literally drop a url in it will read your website and create a sales video out of your website it'll do the images it'll do the voiceover a full-blown video like a two or three minute video just out of what it learns off of your website really really cool stuff yeah it's it blows me away just <laughs> being able to do with it myself. So now awesome. you guys know why I've been quiet for a while. I've been building some stuff here. <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to make sure we have some time for questions and you guys can stick around for a little bit if you want. I don't have anything after this, so happy to stick around. But um, Monica, you or Monique, do you have a question? I did, but I think I, you just answered it with the link in the chat. I was like, okay, I'm sold. Where do I go? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, here. And, um, and also for this is special just for alignable members. We're normally selling the suite of tools for $97 a month. For alignable members, you guys get to buy it for $19.97, 20 bucks a month. Oh, okay. So everything. I need I need the link for that, John. I think the link that's on the page I just gave them is says 47. Or is there a a promo code or anything? Or can you uh, get the link? for everyone for that special i don't have that right. okay let me see here well he's getting the link you guys oh my god that's a deal <laughs> that's amazing okay um who else has a question while you guys have me and john here um 
especially John, what kind of questions do you ask anything? I mean, there are so many amazing things here and you've got the best of the best. So just use the hand reactions button if you don't mind, just go down to react, click the heart and um, you're still sharing your screen, John. Oh, okay. I'll stop there. Yeah. Who else? A, who else has a question? Anybody uh, at all? Please. I ask. just put, I just put the link in there. That is a special link for for you guys on Alignable. I'm actually starting a new Alignable group, and we're going to be doing like weekly trainings and stuff. If any of you want, Sue, did you put the link to the actual ACT program on Alignable? Um. I have my the link that's on my website page that I just shared. Okay, so, cool. Um, the link in there is my website, and then I have the list of tools, and the ACT one is in there. But um, you might want to check and see, unless you're giving them a better deal than the one I put up there. <laughs> yeah, well, the the ACT membership that's the same deal. That's that's an alignable deal. But this new link, I just created this new link for uh, the alignable special because we're going to be okay. releasing a bunch of stuff and giving okay. the alignable people better deals. Okay. Sounds great. So if you guys all, I will, I will get all the links together and make sure that I send out an email to all of you with the right ones, uh, just to make sure you all have the right links, but we have some questions here, Thomas. Go ahead. Hi. Um, hey, John, thank you for that. I, the, the moment Sue posted this tool, I sent her a message that said, wow, we, wow, wow. I can't believe this. <laughs> and as I dug down a little bit deeper, I said, wait a minute. I think I went in the deep end. I'm supposed to be in the kiddie pool. I'm in 10 <laughs> feet of water. So I'm, I was already using like perplexity AI and a couple of other features. So this isn't just for authors, but I do have an author's group um, that I run. And I think this would be good for, you know, not only just promoting that, but to have that conversation. So people who yeah. are struggling as I meet with these people, um, this would be a good tool for them. So I'm just giving you a plug because I didn't know the 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 depth and the breadth of what you covered. And again, I I'm just gonna bring some oxygen tanks the next time I have this conversation and, <laughs> and go deep deep diving with you because I you know I'm I'm still learning how to swim and I, you had me deep like like uh, Mike Nelson. I was deep sea deep sea yeah. hunt fishing or whatever it's called. You know, for you and Fran, you guys that are into book publishing and stuff, if you let me know what you need, I can actually build author tools in there and put them in the tool set for you. Great. Like oh, half okay. of half of the tools in there were from current customers that said, hey, could you make it do this? And I'm like, sure. Just tell me what you want. And I'll build another tool and plug it in there for you. Awesome. By the way, if you guys go to that link that I put in the chat, um, at the bottom of that page, you can sign up for my email list and I will send you guys any new stuff that John has. I will keep you posted on any of that. So, but we have some more questions here. Sandra, go ahead. So my question is um, around you, Sue, promoting. Um, I met you in Allentown. I also have a very similar suite of AI apps called Wealth Palette AI. And I spoke to you and told you I had this suite of apps. Um, so I'm just wondering, are, are you open to doing more chats and promoting other people? Because, you know, yep. I have this suite of apps as well. Yeah, just put put add it. Make sure you guys, if you have things, put it on your um on your profile under your products and services. So very cool. And you can actually become a um an affiliate of John's things. You guys should talk for sure. You're I mean, I'm there's no I, such I, other I actually know John very well. I know awesome. about his platform and all of that. So I'm I'm good because I have pretty much the same white label, the same thing. So um okay. yeah. So, so I'll do, do any that. Questions? Sorry, but, yeah, I'm in one? the Northeast. I'm in uh, right outside Philadelphia. So um, anyone on the call that's there, okay, I could so even meet you in person. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So we're in, a, so we got to keep going because we're we're kind of out of, almost out of time here. But I'm, like I said, I'll stick around a bit. Any more questions about what we're talking about today? Monique, go ahead. 
had to refine the mute. So I, I, it's great that the word affiliate came up because two questions, do I need to wait on you to send another link in order to be a member of the act, whatever that is, or if I go ahead and purchase right now on the 1999 site that you just gave us, John, will that be all I need? I don't want to pay twice if something's included in something else for the same price is what I'm getting. Yeah. At. Yeah. The 19, that was, that's just for the quantum tools. Okay. And that's basically the same amount that I give to the act members. So you're getting, if you get into the act program, you may not need both. You might just need one or the other, but if you need like the mentorship, the ongoing mentorship, that's where the ACT program really shines. Well, especially as it relates to being able to use the tools, if it's yeah. the same price, I would rather have it and not need it than the reverse. So yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to wait for the ACT link from Sue. Is that right? Yeah, I think Sue put it up there in her tools and resources. It's on that page. On the page okay. That I so I'll, I'll go join that group instead of buying right now. And then I can get into that group. Yeah. Oh, I I didn't put the group in there. I put the it was just the ACT program, John. So did you want me to send? I wasn't oh, sure. Either, either one, it's the same deal. So I think I think you're good. So okay, I, I don't, to, to your point, it's already time sensitive. Is there a price to be an ACT program or is that free? Yes. No, the ACT program, normally it's a $2,000 program and then $29 a month. But uh -huh. for the alignable members, the deal that Sue's got up there, it's waiving all the upfront fees. You're just getting in for the $29 a month. I'm okay. not sure I have to, hold on, John. I got to make sure I have the right. John, may I ask the oh, final question? Okay, it's the right. Okay. So that the other lady can have a turn. Sure. My last yeah. question was about the affiliate opportunity. Because of the work that I do as a business coach, I think, Instead of having to do everybody's work for them with the app that I'll be using for myself, I wanted to know if you offer people the opportunity to share that with clients who are struggling with all the things that we just practiced and would love to have these tools to help them stay fresh and sharp. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, as a business consultant, I would love that information as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We'll send, I'll have, uh, I'll talk to John afterwards and we'll craft a bunch of things so that you have all the stuff and I'll send you guys all an email with all, all of the resources and things we talked about. So you all have it in one place. Okay. That's so, perfect. Thank you. Sonali, is that how to say it? Yeah. Hi. So uh, I just had one question. So you are talking about Alignable member. Um, I am non-paid member. It's like... Uh, um, so do, do I still get it or like, do I have to be paid member? No, this no. doesn't have anything to do with what kind of member that you are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no discrimination against the free members. I have to save money somewhere, right? <laughs> sure. Cool. Well, I hope you guys got a lot out of today. I know there's a lot of information. I will I will get a bunch of the links. I will send them as soon as I possibly can after this um, so that you have them all. Um, but definitely go get on uh, the page that I sent you in the chat there, my tools and resources page. There's a bunch of things there. If you want to get a book published, Fran's on the screen here. Um, there's uh, information there and um, all of John's tools. I'm telling you, I'm having so much fun in that quantum suite. It's I'm like, I, I'm, my head's just about ready to explode. So I was excited to share that with you guys today. So and thank you, John. Any last Thank minute? you both. Good Sorry, presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Last awesome. question. So, John, you said that you're going to have a, a webinar. Uh, do you know um, any time frame that you're planning to have that? Because, like, I'm probably, really interested. It's, I'm, it's probably I'm going to be in the next couple of weeks for sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let I'll me... announce it to you on Alignable on the on the Alignable group. So. Yeah, I'll pass it on too. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Sue. <clears throat> You guys have a great day. I will talk to you soon. Thanks, Bye. Sue. Bye.